coming to you again with We're Burning Daylight. As we moved outside and we are together enjoying this great weather and reading God's Word. I pray that you're able to follow along with me. If not, we pray that your ears are perked up and that together we hear God's Word that we might become strong. I'm going to read in Job chapter 13 today. It's one of the responses that Job is giving. And he says, beginning in verse 5, If you would be altogether silent, for you that would be wisdom. Hear now my argument. Listen to the plea of my lips. Will you speak wickedly on God's behalf? Will you speak deceitfully for Him? Will you show impartiality? Will you argue the case for God? Would it turn out well if he examined you? Could you deceive him as you might deceive men? He would surely rebuke you if you secretly showed partiality. Would not his splendor terrify you? Would not the dread of him fall on you? Your maximum are proverbs of acid, and your defenses are defenses of clay. Keep silent and let me speak. Then let come to me what may. Why do I put myself in jeopardy and take my life in my hands? Though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. I will surely defend my ways to his face. Indeed, this will turn out for my deliverance, for no godless man would dare come before him. Listen carefully to my words. Let your ears take in what I say. Now that I have prepared my case, I know I will be vindicated. Amen. Let's take a quick look over in our psalm reading today. We're reading in the fourth chapter of Psalm, and together we read, Answer me when I call to you, O my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Be merciful to me. Hear my prayer. How long, O man, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him, in your anger, do not sin. When you are in on your bed, search your hearts and be silent. I take time and I move over into our gospel reading. We're reading in the Gospel of Luke today in preparation of reading our devotional in the Live Dead Joy. I want to read about the signs of the end of the age beginning in verse 5 of chapter 21. It says, some of the disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen and what will be the sign that they are about to take place? He replied, watch out that you are not deceived, for many will come in my name claiming I am he and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and revolutions, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines, pestilence in various places, fearful events, and great signs from heaven. You recognize this? Even can be called in our present day. But before all of this, they will lay hands on you and persecute you. Oh, that's not promising, but this is the word of God. They will deliver you to the synagogues and to prisons, and you will be brought before the kings and governors and all who account for my, of my name. This will result in your being witnesses to them. But make up your mind not to worry before yourselves. Hallelujah. For I will give your words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. And all men will hate you because of me, but not a hair on your head will perish. By standing firm, you will gain life. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that this desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains and let those in the city get out and let those in the country not enter the city. For this is the time of punishment and fulfillment of all that has been written. How dreadful it will be in those days for a pregnant woman and nursing mothers. They will be in great distress in the land 
and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish, perplexities at roarings and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At the time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing nigh. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees when they sprout leaves. You can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with dispensation, drunkenness, and anxieties of life. And that day will close on your unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! All oh, that may be worth rereading today as you get the opportunity. But I'm taking you to our Live Dead Joy devotional today, Proverbs of Ashes. God, God is perpetrated with empty words. Not because words are unimportant, but because they are so important. Words have the power to break hearts and to give life. God has chosen to communicate largely through words, to create through His words, and to spread the good news primarily through words. We live in an increasingly shallow age where hollow words are nothing new. Many scholars think that Job is chronologically the first book in the Scriptures. Way back then, Job scolded uh, his friends your platitudes are proverbs of ashes, we read in verse 12. While we can use words to unpack complex concepts, we can also use them to reduce profound truths to flippant deities. American spirituality tends to reduce massive realities about God into real little rhyming phrases. Cute, but even uh, eventually repulsive. Arius in 256 to 336 AD was the priest in Alexander, Egypt, who spread heresy that God was superior to Jesus mainly through cute, rhyming songs. God calls us to the simplicity that does not reduce His character to formulas. Our challenge is to articulate His complexities as best as we can without speaking platitudes that we have not experienced. Truths we parrot to others that we have not lived are proverbs of ashes. One essential mark of human words is their short shelf life. Words sourced in human wisdom quickly sour or fall, fall to the ground. What seems, to, seems cute or catchy, if repeated often enough, becomes irritating. And by contrast, Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words by no means will pass away, as we read in, Revelation, or in Luke 21, 33. Because God's words are powerful and permanent, we do well to sing, pray, and preach them literally. What better way to pray than to pray Scripture? When we pray Scripture, we know we are praying God's will and our prayers are guaranteed to be answered. Hallelujah. When we sing Scripture, we sing God's own passions back to Him. And we experience His pleasure and His presence. When we preach scripture, we speak timeless truth that is supported by the authority of the eternal one and his word will not return void. When Jesus baptizes us with his spirit, it always affects our mouths. In an age where technology has empowered more empty words than ever before, our words must be distinctive lest we merely add to the Bible. Jesus promised, and here we say it again in Luke 21, 15, I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. We need to speak proverbs that are anointed speech, not ashes. Hallelujah! 
May God give us words and those words be His words that we have read and that we might articulate them as He has given instruction. May we not try to add to or take away from what He has already written. And we thank You, Lord, that You have scribed these words that we can go to them and in and in trustworthiness repeat them and know that they will not fall on deaf ears nor return void lord i thank you for this and i pray and ask for forgiveness as i repent of any and all times that i might frivolously have used words uh, and place them in place of what may have been perceived as your words lord forgive me and forgive others as together today we have learned and reminded ourselves that we must speak only that what you have given us and we give you all the glory on this wonderful day as we are burning daylight. Lord, we thank you for the opportunities that are ahead of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're burning daylight. We look forward to seeing you again as this week continues.